the objectives are to recollect it and to revise the origin course termination and few applied aspects of the corticospinal tract or pyramidal tract so to introduce we have many pathways which are descending from the brain to the spinal cord and so that it can con they can control the motor component that is a muscle but transmission of signals from the motor cortex to the muscle which is going uninterrupted non stop in the pyramidal tract or corticospinal tract up to spinal cord then there are many other pathways which are indirectly passing through cerebellum basal ganglia and brain stem nuclei then going downward so the indirect pathways now we are topic of discussion is corticospinal tract which is direct non stop pathway from the brain to the to the spinal cord let us see some of the points in terms of the function of the corticospinal tract so it provides central control of initiating any movement is the finger movement or the hand movement or any muscle movement in the body initiating the motor movement or command we need pyramidal tract then it is also important to maintain the tone myotonic reflexes and cutaneous reflexes one applied point here is the pyramidal tract it will take 2 to 3 years after birth to make the myelination complete so that is the reason why uh, in children below 2 years the babinski's reflex is positive because the myelination is not complete by 3 years then if you take the first part of the essay question origin then we'll go the course of the pyramidal tract then we'll see the termination then finally apply it first we start with the origin you can see this on the screen so it's 30% of the fibers out of 1 million fibers in each side the tract carries the 30% of the fibers are originating from the primary motor cortex then 30% from the premotor and supplementary motor areas together and 40% is interestingly contributed by the somatosensory cortex then i said the 70% myelinated 70% fibers are myelinated in the tract out of 1 million and 3% of the fibers are originating from joint pyramidal cells which are known as bed cells that is the reason why the name pyramidal tract the one other reason is they they go down in the pathway and they form pyramids in the middle of longata then they decussets to the other side that is what we are going to see in the flow chart you can see this is the picture from guyton on the top uh, right hand side you can see the motor cortex i am not depicting not depicting premotor areas and supplementary motor areas and somatic sensory cortex here motor cortex has a single unit then it is all the fibers are converging towards the posterior limb of ventral capsule that is narrow stereo this this Uh, converging fibers are together known as corona radiata then we have various parts of the brain stem i'm not going into detail now because you know bit of anatomy also then i will concentrate on the medulla oblongata and dorsal we'll see that also as i said this is the non stop pathway without any interruption without any synapse in between so this is the flow chart i have created out of my knowledge on this topic so that these flow charts will be useful to maintain uh, the time Uh, in the exam, so that you can easily draw these flow charts and gain the full marks by by impressing the examiner. So you can see on the top right hand side, on the top right hand side, you can see primary motor thirty thirty percent, premotor and supplementary areas thirty percent, somatic sensory cortex forty percent. Then all are diverging through coronal radiate to the posterior limb of the internal capsule, that is the narrowest part between the caudate nucleus and putamen of the basal ganglia. Then the brain stem. If you go downward a bit, that is pyramids. Which are in the middle of longata, the 90% of the fibers will decussate to the opposite side, then forming the lateral corticospinal tract. The other 10 to 15% of fibers which are not decussating will go downward as ventral corticospinal tract. Eventually, the author says that the other fibers will also cross at the L level below the pyramids or middle of longata. But some fibers will terminate directly under the lower motor neuron on that side. But majority will go to the lateral corticospinal tract on the opposite side. then if you can see the box on the lower part here i'll show you here the 55% of the fibers are terminating in the cervical part of the spinal cord 20% of the fibers are terminating in the thoracic part of the thoracic segment of the spinal cord and 25% are in the lumbosacral area if you see the termination in detail one more slide most fibers terminate in the intermediate gray that is lamina 4 to lamina 7 and they also terminate in the interneurons and sensory neurons but few fibers will terminate And the motor neurons directly in the lamina 12. Motor neuron means that is alpha motor neuron or the lower motor neuron. Anything 
above this level is upper motor neuron. So that I will take a different video, the difference between upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion. Now we will take the applied aspect here. Applied aspect here is corticospinal tract lesion that is hemiplegia. So this can be due to three possibilities. One is stroke which is scientifically known as cerebrovascular accident, CVA simply. Then tumor compressing this pathway, trauma uh, causing damage disruption to the pathway, resulting in upper motor neuron disease. Okay, this is all the lesion happening either in the motor cortex, central capsule, and above the level of medulla oblongata. So that you will get the paralysis on the opposite side of the body, that is what is hemiplegia. That is contralateral part of the body is involved. Then one to one more slide to complete our discussion rapidly. So Peripheral tract lesion or CST lesion results in PT syndrome or hemiplegia, both are same. It's spastic paralysis. Spastic means the tone is increased. So the cause can be due to damage to the non pyramidal pathways or non pyramidal part of the motor cortex because in stroke, it is not only the pyramidal tract fibers involved, the extensive areas of the brain involved so that the inhibitory fibers which are coming down and inhibiting the brainstem vertebral and reticular nuclei is gone. So the, when the, that inhibition is gone, the brainstem uh, vestibular as well as reticular nuclei, the reticular nuclei will become unstoppable and they can directly activate the muscles continuously so that the tone is increased. Then augmented deep and tender reflexes which that means the either biceps reflex or the knees or knees are is augmented the reflex activity is much more. And last point is loss of abdominal reflex and cremastic reflex. Interestingly the one more superficial reflex is Babinski's plantar reflex is Babinski is positive, is observed in upper motor neuron lesion and sleep in adults as well as children below 3 years because of the 